Oh, we're live. We're putting that in there. Oh, Turn Lance's live? mic up. We're thinking of all the T-shirts that we've come up th- with through the years, <laughs> and uh, we have a a wide smattering of them, if you will. Some good ones out there. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go through puberty real quick. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, as you can see, we have a, a new face. If you guys know us, you know that Spencer's been working for us, but we have Spencer Higa. Who now is an employee of Fly Fish Food. Yes. So About we, time. We stole Spence away. <laughs> what? It's been, what, several months now, right? Six or seven months. Six or seven yeah. months. Yeah. But the cool thing about our team is most of the guys we've known for a long, long time. There's kind of like a group of old school Utah fishermen back from the old Utah on the Fly Forum days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah, I, I used to hang out at the Orva shop. You were the manager at the Orva shop for a number the, of years, right? Yeah, I was the fishing manager at the Orva shop for four or five years. Yeah. Yep, and you'd come in every single day. Yeah, <laughs> so I, I worked right around the corner, so I was like the lunchtime. I, I got my first uh, Renzetti vice from Spence, so we were talking about that. that the other day. Yep. Yeah, well, I, I remember I was doing a demo at a at uh, one of the shows, and I was doing these crawfish, the 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 famous the $4, $4 crawfish. crawfish, yeah. So I was doing those, and you traded me a vice for for my time. That was I'm like, holy crap, this is this is a no brainer. <laughs> but Spence has been around the industry pretty much your whole life, right? You're a long time. Yeah, you guided a lot on on uh, for Falcons Ledge. And yep, I started guiding at Falcons Ledge in 1996. You're old, bro. I know. <laughs> No, I know. Like, so you were just a guide there? Yeah, so I started out as a guide um, I probably until 2007 or 2008, then I started managing the lodge. Um, so I was doing both. I was guiding plus managing, um, and then did that till about 2018. Yeah, so yeah. a yeah. long time. Yep. So Spence has been around the block. Spence is a great fisher, a really good fly tire. You have a famous fly called the Henga's Sauce, right? <laughs> Close. <laughs> Close. You all, you almost got it. Well, that's what all the customers say. The Henga's Sauce. The Henga's. <laughs> it's funny. Like, you guys have any of those Henga's Sauce? I'm like, yeah, old Henga right, is right here behind the counter. Why don't you ask him? I should add an N in my name. Yeah. Except for he pronounces his Higa. Same thing, though. Right. So. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, not as many as flies you guys have, but. Well, we we paid a lot of people off to get our flies in. So, you know, there, there are a lot of ways to skin a cat. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, Curtis and I have, have dabbled very lightly in guiding. We've been around guides a lot. You hear a lot of stories. But uh, we, we thought it would be a fun time to, to kind of uh, talk about the experiences of, of guiding from the other side of it. Because when you um, get together with guides, like always, always, there's, a there's story. something that strikes up a story. And yeah. and there's yeah. no shortage of the stories. And it's hilarious. Like, yeah. So it's like you, you get done with the trip and like there's this group, that group, and then the third group comes wa- wandering in and the guide has a look on his face like, I'm like, nope, I'm not even going to tell you what just happened. Let's get rid of these people and then let's talk. So so we're going to talk about some of those little things. Um, anyway, yeah, Curtis and I have only guided them enough to, to realize it's not our forte. Like, guides are like a good guide. It's a tough, it's it's a tough, tough. gig. It is. People, it's, uh, it's not as easy as people think. You get younger guides that come in like, I want a guide, I want a guide, and you think it's all fun. And I mean, it is a lot of fun, but man, it's a lot of work. Uh, there's a lot of prep that goes into it before the trip and then after the trip, cleaning up, getting ready for the next day. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. Because you pretty much have to take that crappy cast and crappy presentation and turn that into fish for these people. <laughs> like, I have a yeah. hard enough time catching fish for myself, you know. Yeah, that's the that's one thing that I would try to do is is see how they could cast before we went out and fish. So the nice thing about Falcons Ledge is we had a lot of we have a lot of ponds on the property, so we could go out and just you know fish for a little bit just to see what their casting level was, and and then go from there. So. Uh, but yeah, that's a that's one of the challenges is trying to get uh, get people on fish, get, put them in a and give them an opportunity to, to catch a fish, 
without getting super close to the fish. <laughs> <laughs> well, you just you just try harder, right, with your fly pole. You just, yeah, it's all muscle. <laughs> it's all no. muscle. Yeah, yeah. Just fling it a little harder. <laughs> It's yeah, like just, a golf swing. Kids. The harder you swing, the, stuff, yeah. the farther it goes. It's like, sir, uh, you're piling that up really well in front of you, about 15 feet in front of you. And I think that if you just really power down more, you'd get you'd get it out there better. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm going to start out with one of my stories because it's it's a funny story that that happened to me with uh, with guiding. I don't think these dudes listen to our podcast. I'm pretty sure they don't. But <laughs> just a, a disclaimer: the stories we tell have happened multiple times, so it could have a resemblance could be anybody. to you, but it's probably not, dude. If this would have happened to me multiple times, I'd probably be, you know, knitting and crocheting at home because <laughs> I would have just said, "That's enough." No, so you know, you 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 show up for a, a trip. And, uh, you know, just like Spencer, you want to try to get a feel for the skill level right there, right? So um, they, they roll in. They've got all the latest waders and boots. And, and uh, the guy and his son, the dad, has, like, this big vest. And there's just trinkets everywhere. I'm like, oh, well, I'm <laughs> they serious about it. <laughs> so I had to pick up the vest after lunch. I realized that every fly box was empty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, like nothing had been used. So here he was rocking with his 28 pieces of flare off his vest. Looked like a Christmas tree <laughs> tingling in the wind. Anyway, long story short, um, it was a kind of a picky fishery. And I finally got the sun to throw a cast long enough to get a fish to be interested in. It's a bright pink cheech leech, right? He's stripping and there's like a 24 inch brown that's just kind of sharking. He's coming right for the fly. And this kid's like, mm, you know, just stripping away. So what do you say when a guy, when you're a guide and you need him to stop? You say, kill it. Kill it, kill it, kill it, right? So unbeknownst to me, uh, he did see the fish as well, right? And so I thought if you would have seen the fish, you would have stopped. So I say, kill it, kill it, kill it. And he takes his rod and he starts bashing the water. <laughs> whack! Whack! He's so... He's trying to kill a fish with his fly with his fly rod. Oh my gosh. And as a guide, like I'm just sitting there like, hmm. So I just asked him like like one of your kids, like, so what what, what was going on back there? Like why are we uh, slamming the water with a thousand dollar fly rod that you're borrowing? Well you said to kill it. Yeah, but that's like normal guide speak for, hey, stop doing what you're doing. So anyway, he uh, he did not catch a fish that trip. And uh, that's I think that was the last time I ever guided. But it was just like, man, like, I don't know. It was it was fun enough time. You know, you had father and son arguing with each other because who knows what. You got their backstories you have to listen to and, you know. Oh, yeah. So, anyway, that's probably the funniest one that happened to me as a guide. Like, I literally did not know what to say. <laughs> My funniest one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we, Spence probably has the best stories, but oh, we teach and I have to no, get you out guys, You guys have to say, we got to get them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, we were up on a high mountain lake mm -hmm. and... Uh, neither of them, I, there was two people with me, and I don't think either of them had been on a float too, but they didn't want to say they hadn't because I said, we need to go to the other side, the fish hold on this channel. And it was October, so it was pretty stormy that day, really cold. Um, so we get up there, <clears throat> I get all the tubes inflated, and um, <laughs> that's another part is if you're getting people with float tubes and fins, that's tricky. They just don't yeah. understand that. Yeah. It could be dangerous, but it, so we, we end up getting on the water, um, kicking out across the lake. And so I'm hanging with one of the guys, the other dude, um, had, I, I wasn't watching. He was behind me. And after a while, the, the dad, the, the, these people may or may not be the same ones, but, 
Um, the they dads. Were. They were. <laughs> they was them. It was them. I told them. I said, Curtis, I mean, don't do it. <laughs> I said, Curtis, like, for the love of all things holy, do not do it. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Now we're making it even more obvious who it was. <laughs> no, it was fun, though. I'll field the call. Um, I'll field yeah. the call. Um, great guys. So, so um, he said, well, you need to check on my son. And I, I, again, my back was to him. And so I turned around, and, and I felt bad because I should have given him more instruction on how to move in a float tube. He was fully reclined, like on his back. <laughs> Like an upside down turtle. <laughs> like, it, like it was like a pool bed. Yeah. <laughs> laying, just laying down, arms out, and his feet were not even in the water. His fins were flapping on the top oh of the my water. Gosh. Oh, I felt bad. Anyway, I did go over there and uh, I helped him out. And we got over there, caught a really nice brook trout, and it unloaded. <laughs> Storm was so what we had to get out of there. But anyway, that was the funniest thing too. I, I did bust up laughing and I didn't want him to see me, but no pictures, no, no video, no pictures or video. <laughs> Unlike Briggs last episode, which we do have some proof of the cougar. Well, this, this is not a far fetched thing. No, you that's know? not. You no. get guys and, <laughs> and again, and my bad for not it being is believable, a good teacher. Yeah. But yeah. And then the first thing you do is like, well, how long have you fished? And they're both like 20 years. It's like, oh crap, that's longer than me at the time. So cool. I get to learn something here today. Well, 20 years means once a, once year, a year with a guide. <laughs> so pretty much not fishing. <laughs> Anyway, so. so let's get to the good stuff, though. Spence, you oh, guided I mean, you're way, guys, way more people than we have. You guys have some good stories. But so one story that comes to mind was early on in, in my guiding career, um, working at Falcon's Ledge, we had a guy that came out from back east for a week, twice a year. And one year he came out, my boss had accidentally overbooked the lodge. And so... This guy likes to stay on the property and fish, but we had a big corporate group coming out and they were just gonna take the entire lodge just for the day. And so my boss pulled me aside and said, hey, you need to take your guy off the property. We'll give him a free day, but take him off the property, go fish a river, because I mean, he would fished quite a few rivers, but he wanted to fish something new. So my boss told me about this river and I, I had never been there. So I said, well, just drop me a map, let show me how to get there. And so, uh, have breakfast the next morning with this guy and kind of explain to him, hey, we're going to go off the property today. Um, we have a big group coming in. He was totally fine with it. He's like, all right, that's great. And he had his son with him. So his son was coming with us. So I, I head out to go to this river and I ended up getting lost <laughs> because the directions were horrible. <laughs> and so I go down this, this road that the directions tell me to go and we get to the river. It's a dry riverbed. And I'm thinking, oh, this can't be it. So I pull out. We didn't have service. I went back up to the main road. Then when I had service, called my boss and said, hey, where is this? He told me, yeah, dude, hang, a, hang a left right there. And I said, I did. There's no water. And he's like, no, it's, it's right there. Just keep going up the road. So I continue to go up the road for an hour. Oh. Dry riverbed the whole time. I'm thinking, this can't be it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I turn around. We go back out to the main road go down to the other direction and still like everything we found water but it was all private and so i'm like i we can't fish this and this guy was getting a little mad he goes well where are we going to fish today we've already wasted two and a half hours so after about three hours of driving in all directions trying to find this river he said you know what let's just go back to this other river that we fished the day before we know there's fish there we know how to get there like fine so it took us another hour and a half to get to that river, we finally get to the river, looks great, we see fish rising, we get ready, as soon as we get in the, in the river, strips some line out, makes his first cast, lightning just started, and a huge downpour. He looked at me, he throws the rod in the river, and he's like, we're going home. <laughs> <laughs> he was so mad, didn't say a word, the ride home to the lodge, and uh, yeah, he, he was, his son was super upset. And my boss came up to me and said, what happened? I said, I didn't, you gave me horrible directions. <laughs> yeah. So, but that ended up being what the river I got lost on. I did find it later on. And that was sent uh, up until now. That's just been the best river I've ever guided on. 
But yeah, that was probably the worst. It's like the, your worst nightmare being a guide is getting lost, trying to find a river and you can't find it. So that was uh, that was my first uh, incident <laughs> as a guide. Really? You can see not finding the fish, but <laughs> we got a dry riverbed. We and I'm yeah. like, I think there's water. There was water here. This here <laughs> place is where they invented dry flies. <laughs> All right. So I ended up getting back. My boss pulled out a map. He's like, no, no, you got to turn this way. And I, I pulled out the directions. I, it says left. I should have gone right. Yeah. So, but, uh, yeah, that was bad. I have another one that's kind of similar to yours about killing, not killing a fish. But so <laughs> this is before I would actually uh, explain beforehand, like, how to catch a fish, how to play a fish how to release a fish. Because usually what happens, they catch a fish, they have it, and they go like this up the rock. <laughs> that I think we've all time. seen it. And then by the time you look, they've got the tip section. There's like six inches of rod going, <laughs> you're like, no! So I had three rods break in the same day once. That, yeah, that's a good way to break a rod. But no, there's, I had a husband and a wife. She had never fly fished before. And we're fishing it at on the ponds. And... Uh, you know, he's catching a bunch of fish. She's kind of getting a little, hey, I, I need, I want to catch a fish. I want to catch more than him. So she's casting. And again, I didn't explain anything to her. So she casts out, she catches a fish and she's got it on and she pinches the line, won't let the fish go. And all I said was, let it go, let it go, let it go. She <laughs> oh, throws no. the rod in the pond. <laughs> <laughs> we lost the rod. I was, I was like, what did you, she said, let it go. She just let the whole thing go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we lost a rod that day. The strategy is you let it go, we'll find the rod. And maybe she was the, the godfather of Tenkara. Because <laughs> that's what you're supposed to do, right? Hook a fish, if you play it, just throw your rod in there. <laughs> Good job. Okay, yeah, it's chilled out, so I'm going to fight it again and piss it off again. You know? Oh, my gosh. No, but that's, yeah. The funny thing about, like, the father-son duo is usually, like, one of them's super into it and the other one's not. And like, if it's the dad with the son, it's like he really wants his son to have an awesome time. And the son's just looking at like you like, hmm, you look like a bearded F up. And I'm gonna make your life hell for this day. One of our, uh, you know, Josh Mena that worked uh -huh. here, yeah. he had like a nine year old look him straight in the eyes and tell me he was trash. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh no. And so, he, he's like, uh, the way he told is just freaking hilarious. And yeah, one of the challenges, well, it, not really a challenge, but so when I was managing the lodge, my job was when big groups came in, was to kind of um, um, assign guides to the clients. And, and so, are you trying to look like at personalities and stuff like yeah, that? Yeah, look bit? at personalities and whoever fished with whoever the, the, day, the day before. We tried to switch them up a little bit. And so we're sitting at the breakfast table and uh, I'm trying my best, trying to figure out like who's going with who. And I got to the point where everybody was going with somebody different, except for this one lady uh, was going with one of our guides for the second day in a row. And I thought, oh, that's not a big deal. So we get done, we're having breakfast, and just out of the blue, she raises her hand. And there's 12 ladies, you know, six guides. And uh, so we got a full table. She raises her hand and she said, hey, Spencer, can I, can I go with a different guy today? I was like, oh. And her guide was sitting right across from her at the <laughs> table. And he was like, kind of looked at me and I was like, yeah, yeah, we can, we can get you another guide. And I felt so bad for the guide because he was, I mean, what do you do? Like, she, she did pull me aside and said, hey, can we just, she, right there, she, hey, can I get another guide? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a so. vote of confidence. <laughs> And that's that's what I think a lot of people understand is like if you're a guide, like if you're a guide worth your weight in, in salt, um, you're working your butt off. Yeah. Right. And it's it's always a juggle fest because like without fail, like you have someone who will not listen. Right. Well, not without fail, but a lot of times a you're, you're of times, dealing with yeah. people who don't listen. And even as a skilled angler, like. Um, there's always stuff to learn. Like I was down in the in the in Florida, f flats fishing, <laughs> and we didn't see hardly any fish. But you had to be ready, like, because I wasn't gonna get yelled at by the guy because I have my line <laughs> all screwed up, and my wife was out on the boat. I'm like, hey, just just so you know, saltwater guides are a little different. 
<laughs> he said, so if he starts getting mad and if he starts swearing and cussing and everything, just no big deal, right? But uh, he worked his butt off to try to get us into fish, yeah. and we, we couldn't really find anything. Uh, but my wife did learn some really good vocabulary on that trip because <laughs> we had tarpon rolling. I'm fishing a nine weight with 30 pound test and like a two aught hook. Ooh. Guy had had his pole at an angle and I went like a double haul, just like crazy powerful, you know, you know how I cast, you know, just freaking power. <laughs> no, but the, the fly wrapped around the pole and when it came undone, it like moved up the pole to where his hand was and it deposited that two hot hook into his finger Ooh. and broke off 30 pound test in his finger. Oh, ouch. And he said the F word about every way you can imagine it. <laughs> I mean, it was, it was quite, quite a show of talent. <laughs> And I just turned and looked at Maria, my wife. She looked at me, and it was all good, you know, because I gave her the warning. <laughs> but you warned her. Yeah. That guy is probably looking at me like this freaking trout guy. He's going to be on a podcast talking yeah, about you. Say, Let me tell you something. There's <laughs> yeah, this guy from Utah. Fly shop owner, supposedly a good fisherman. He sucked. <laughs> and what did he do to get the hook out? Oh, yeah. So I guess we'll just roll right into that yeah, story. That's a good so, one. so he had a buddy. <laughs> Cause I'm like, hey, I got a trick that I can. He's like, no. I'm like, okay. And I wasn't gonna, cause it, it was he was so bad he couldn't even bend his finger. Ouch. So he had a buddy that's an anesthesiologist. Drove from Miami down to the Key Key Biscayne. <clears throat> Took him about an hour, but he rolled up. He had his little bag, numbed him up, got the hook out, and then off we went. <laughs> that's so cool. <laughs> but it was just like, and the crazy thing is like. Because he just had a home kit or whatever. Yeah. To, to sterilize his hand, he brought Dawn dish soap. I've oh. heard that before. Wow. Really? So he huh. puts it all over his finger, he rubs it, he's like, this is going to hurt. But he made him bend his finger so that the Dawn would get into the wound. Ouch. So, yeah. That would not note well, Kudos to that guide. To that guide. Yeah. Dawn dish soap to clean out all your wounds. Wow. But yeah, that uh, I learned some new vocabulary Ooh. there. It was <laughs> quite interesting. I haven't practiced any of it yet, but <laughs> not yet. <laughs> you guys will know because I'll be asking you for a place to sleep for that night. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, uh, it's a talent to be able to go out there and just get people into into fish. But at the same time, it's it's funny to see people who are just like totally not grateful because it's yeah. like I went fishing with a an undisclosed <laughs> person that that I know won't listen to this. <laughs> His first time on the river caught 10 fish on dry flies during a nice. caddis hatch. For whatever reason, they switched to midges, like caddis to midges. It was the weirdest transition ever. So I switched up and I caught a bunch more, and he couldn't catch them on the midges. But he was he was like telling me that he's like, you he's like, you're doing something different. I know you're doing something different. And I'm like, no. But he, he thought that just because he had the same fly on that I had on, that he should be able to catch just as many fish. And I think that a lot of people that come and get a guide who literally have never cast a fly rod before, they just come with these huge expectations of, oh, yeah, it's just fishing. It shouldn't be that yeah. hard. You oh, know? yeah. <laughs> so guides have to put up with that crap all the time. Yeah, and no, I mean, we, we've got lots of stories about, you know, things that go wrong or whatever, but one of the coolest um, guiding experiences I ever had was uh, with uh, Project Healing Waters. Yeah, we had a group come out. They they came out once a year, and it's usually different participants each time. And but the same sponsor would come out. He'd bring two or three of his, his buddies or whatever, and they would help guide. Um, and then we'd use a couple of our guides. We'd go out. So the first day they went out, um, uh, one guy came back pretty frustrated one of the participants he was pretty frustrated he didn't catch any fish and uh, he was legally blind so he couldn't really he couldn't see anything and so that whole day this one the pseudo guy that was there was telling him to set the hook every time a fish would come up and he was dry fly well the guy couldn't see it he's like how come you didn't set the hook didn't you see it and the guy was like well no I, actually <laughs> yeah. I didn't see it 
And so he was pretty frustrated. So the next day, we're at breakfast. That guy was like, no, I don't think I'm going to go out today. I think I'm just going to sit here in the lodge and kind of enjoy myself. And I was like, are you sure? Make, let's just go. Let's go for a half day. If you don't like it, we'll come back. And he's like, OK, fine. So I talked him into it. We went up to um, a little stream. And I just told him, I said, I'm going to be your eyes today. And we're going to practice this. We're not going to fish you know, where the, where the fish are. But I want you to cast upstream. And when I say set, you just rip it up out of the water. And so we practiced that for about 10 minutes. So we got it down. I said, okay, well, let's go up to this pool. We went up to the pool and first cast in there, fish comes up. I said, set the hook, boom, catches the fish. Brings it in. He's like, oh, wow, that was cool. We end up catching 15 fish that day. Get back to the lodge and he was like, man, that was awesome. He goes, I was gonna give up. But uh, he goes, I was getting frustrated because the guy yesterday was getting frustrated because I couldn't catch any fish, and I just couldn't see the fly. So, uh, but that was that was a really cool experience, um, being able to get that guy into some fish that was legally blind, couldn't see anything, and uh, um, ended up having a really good day. So yeah, he'll yeah, he'll cool. remember that forever too because like. Uh, you probably remember the first time you ever really had a good day fly fishing, mm, and yeah. it's just like those are ingrained. You just in your remember mind. those times, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's that's awesome. That's very cool. So, but yeah, you, for all the all the funny and things that things that go wrong when you're guiding, there's also those really cool experiences where you know something awesome happens. Yeah, yeah. Like uh, I wasn't guiding; I was just fishing a guy one, with a guy that came in from Virginia one time and. We went to a lake fishing out of the drift boat. We were fishing our fancy midge tips, right? And just absolutely crushing fish. And there's a couple on a drift boat that was kind of next to us a little bit. And uh, we just got talking to them a little bit and they're, they're asking what we're doing. And so I ended up grabbing all their leaders and hacking them up and turning them into like de facto midge tips and showing them how to fish it. <laughs> and they started crushing fish. Um, later that week, they came into the shop because we kind of told them, and, and they uh, they actually are our regular customers now. Like they come in all the time, and <laughs> nice. and they they have the midge tip lines, they have all the stillwater rods. So yeah, I mean it's it's cool when that happens. You know, you get to to have a a little bit of an impact by sharing the one thing that we're good at in this whole <laughs> life, right? That we're sort of good at. They're sort of good at. Yeah, sort of good at. Um, I had another <clears throat> another experience. Not it was I wasn't guiding, but uh, my friend Brian was guiding, and he got. And it seems like every year he got kind of put with some clients that were a little difficult. But this husband and wife they came and and uh, um, they were difficult from the get go. I mean, it was they were complaining about everything. Finally, they you know that when it was time to go out and fish, um, they get to the river, and the husband goes up and hands Brian a whistle. And Brian's like, oh, what's this? He's like, well, I'm going to give you that whistle. If, uh, if my wife catches a fish, I want you to, to blow the whistle. I want to come see it. So he's like, okay. <laughs> oh, and then he had a whistle. The husband had a whistle. And he said, Brian, if, if I whistle once, that means I'm okay. If I whistle twice, that means I need you to come help me. Brian's <laughs> like, oh, okay. And so, good boy, good boy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's like, what, am I a dog? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so the whole day, he was this guy was blowing his whistle either once or twice. And Brian's like, I don't know. Once, does, what does that mean? I mean, he needs help or is he okay? He whistles twice. Like, so every time he whistled, he went over. No, no, I didn't need you. I was just saying I was okay. And so that went on. For, I think they were supposed to be there for four or five days. And I think after day two, they ended up leaving. And Brian was like, yeah. <laughs> so we have a, a guide um, banquet at the end of the season, and so I just I got a plaque and I got, I got a whistle and put it in a, a little <laughs> shadow box for Brian oh, that dude. day. So, but yeah, it's just it, I mean some things that happen you just have like you're like really did that really just happen? Dude, I just thought of one that I remembered because we would go out to a certain place in Wyoming to fish, and we weren't really guides like we'd get paired up with people, but I would. Like freaking Curtis, who like, like the night before we'd meet people, and I'd always take out the difficult ones, right? So this time, like waters, like chocolate milk. We're thinking this is this is gonna be tough because like when we were there before, it was like dry fly in any hole, you're catching fish, right? And so we told 
everybody that it's warm enough probably to wet wade. So explaining that to people who want to wear their their Orvis waders for the first time ever. <laughs> no, or whatever. No, usually it's like frog togs or something. <laughs> So I'm explaining to my my dude. I'm like, hey, I'm just going to be wearing some long pants. It's like wet weight. It's it's awesome. It's a good way to stay cool. And he said, but the bugs here are relentless. Like the deer flies here are like flying piranhas. They will eat you up and they will ruin your freaking life. So I say that we go in. <laughs> the morning comes out. He's got the zip off pants. But he had the Daisy Dukes version. Oh, <laughs> like, no. no joke. I'm seeing about 23 inches of thigh. Oh. You know what I'm saying? And they have never seen the sun. <laughs> and so I'm telling him, I'm like, hey, do you have? Do you still have the bottom halves of your pants? He's like, oh, yeah. He's, I said, I would put them back on. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, I fish like this all the time. I said, no, dude. Those deer flies or, or horse flies, whatever you call them, they're going to eat you like you're a beef platter, bro. So he doesn't listen. And I'm like, I'm going back to my my room and I got my big can of like the Ultrathon aerosol. So I'm spraying it on myself. I'm like, are you sure? Do you want some of this? He's like, no, 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 I'm good. He's like, I don't ever use that stuff. I'm like, oh, bro, that's like walking into a bear colony covered in honey. So anyway, <laughs> we're out there and we're fishing away and like every cast is like jerky. Like this, because he's literally casting and trying to hit these bugs. And I'm like, dude, I'm like, I got the spray. He's like, no, no, I'm, I'm good. And I'm counting, like, I think I got to 37 bites. Oh. And they're oh, not mosquito bites. They're the yeah. freaking horse fly. Ouch. So finally, about halfway through the day, I just, I just stuck up behind him and I just started spraying his legs. <laughs> and he didn't tell me this time. So anyway, but I'm just like... Oh my How gosh. hard would that be, man? Because like, th and those suckers itch forever too. Cool. So if you're gonna tough guy, don't be tough guy over <laughs> freaking deer flies. No. I remember when that day was done, his legs were just covered in yeah. bites. It was <laughs> bad, 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 bad. Anyway, good times. Well, we'll probably be doing more of this style. Yeah, format just kind of freestyle kind of story and, time. Story time about... You don't have any cougar stories, do you? Cougar the stories. Animal, the animal. I mean, we're the trying animal. to one-up Oh, the, the animal. The an oh, okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> <laughs> I just Spence saw those wheels. Like, ah, well, uh, I do in twins. Twins. Your twin turbo kicked in. <laughs> Finally, my you. expertise. <laughs> Let me tell you. Actually... <laughs> That was, that was a terrible play on words. Home run. All right, all right. Now for the, our next lesson in SEO. <laughs> oh, oh man. no, I don't have any. I don't have any stories about cougars. I mean, I've seen someone. I've I mean, you're fishing. in the basin. There's got to be at least a Bigfoot or an orb of some sort. I did see a wolverine. Skinwalker. Dude, that's cool. I did cool. see a wolverine. Mm -hmm. uh, we were coming back late at night from fishing down near Duchesne and as we're coming up the dirt road back to Falcon's Ledge this dark thing just darts across the road and I was like that's I mean that would, I don't know what that was it wasn't big enough to be a, a mountain lion it was we just couldn't figure it out but I could I could see the markings on it. so when it got back to the lodge I I googled Wolverine because there was a sighting up way up higher in the UN which is pretty rare you yeah, they're, they're up like at 10,000 like 10, feet. Came yeah. out, like the little, yeah. they had big old lamb chops. I know that <laughs> yeah. one. So I, I saw a picture, a uh, Google image picture of, of a wolverine, and that's what we saw. It ran right across the road, and, and I guess that was a drought year, so I think it was down lower. We had tons of rabbits in the canyon that, that, that summer, so I think it just came down to eat. But, uh, yeah, earlier that year, one of the, the camp hosts up there said that you know, if you have, if we had any food, be careful because the this a wolverine was following hikers down because he yeah. can smell the food in the Dang. backpack. So, so, um, but yeah, I've seen bears, but no mountain lions really. Well, with clients. Well, I'm just telling everybody if you've not listened to our previous episode with Brig and Brig's <laughs> wildlife, yeah. the wildlife world of Brig. So uh, with Brig, he <laughs> kept freaking out about like cougars and everything so my job was to just uh 
pull up the facts here, mm. right? So I just tried to Google, do Wolverine to kill humans, and this is how nerdy our world is. He was talking about the, the character, Wolverine, and how many people he had killed. <laughs> and his, um, so oh we can't even search that for you, Spence, my bad. And we can blame this one squarely on the shoulders of Brigham because <laughs> most people I don't have to do Google searches on how many animals killed humans but for bringing mean, yeah if you didn't have pictures to prove it i don't know if i'd believe it yeah well 100 so, certainly we'll we'll yeah. see how that turns out yeah if you haven't listened to the previous episode you yeah. need to because we it's eye-opening we hold brigham's tiny little feet to the fire <laughs> and when i say fire it was just a lighter he's tiny anyway so oh anyway gosh. meantime in our next episode we'll learn about sasquatch and skinwalkers Skinwalkers. Ooh. I grew up in Vernal, bro. Yeah, we know about skin. If you've ever, you need to Google Skinwalkers. It's pretty yeah. wild stuff. Maybe we need to create a fly caught. No, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> yeah, you no, better not. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody should. Anyway. All right. Well, with that, like, subscribe. Um, we do this. It'll be posted on YouTube and, and your podcast. favorite podcasting If you're listening on the podcast, station. you can see the video if you want. There we go. Laters. Thanks, Spence. Yeah, thank yeah. you, guys. We'll have you on in the future. Awesome. Maybe. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs>